Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace the Minister of Justice and the Chairman of the Supreme Judicial Council of Saudi Arabia, Dr. Walid Al Samani, on the occasion of his visit to the kingdom. The minister conveyed to His Majesty the King the greetings of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud, and their wishes for further progress and prosperity for Bahrain and its people. His Majesty welcomed the the minister and asked him to convey his greetings to the Saudi King and Crown Prince and his wishes for further progress and prosperity for Saudi Arabia and its people. His Majesty praised the historic bilateral relations and the strong cooperation in all fields. He highlighted the importance of such visits to enhance the level of cooperation and joint coordination, especially in the judicial field. His Majesty praised the efforts of the Saudi King in bolstering the bilateral relations and coordination. The minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his keenness to strengthen the historic bilateral relations. He hailed the development witnessed by Bahrain in all fields. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the service of thanksgiving for the life of His Royal Highness Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip at Westminster Abbey, London. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister expressed his sincere condolences to the Queen of the UK and Northern Ireland, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and the President of the Commonwealth of Nations, His Royal Highness Prince of Wales, Prince Charles and the Royal Family, Government and British people. His Royal Highness Prince Salman paid tribute to His Royal Highness Prince Philip Philip's service to the UK and the Commonwealth. He recalled that His Royal Highness Prince Philip was instrumental in strengthening the long-standing relations between Bahrain and the UK. He noted that Bahrain is committed to continuing to develop these ties. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met the Deputy Dubai Ruler, Deputy UAE Prime Minister and UAE Finance Minister, His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The meeting, which took place on the sidelines of His Highness Sheikh Nasser's attendance of the World Government Summit held at Expo 2020 Dubai, was attended by the Youth and Sports Affairs Minister Ayman Al Mu'ayyad. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the solid fraternal Bahraini UAE relations, noting that bilateral ties are progressing steadily thanks to the unwavering interest of His Majesty Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Highness Sheikh Nasser stressed the importance of further strengthening relations between the two countries and their brotherly people to bring about more progress and prosperity from them. During the meeting, His Highness Sheikh Nasser and His Highness Sheikh Maktoum also discussed means to bolster cooperation between Bahrain and the UAE across various fields. The Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of Development Projects and Infrastructure Ministerial Committee, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, patronized the meeting with the Minister of Housing, Basim Al Hamar. The meeting was organized by the Ministry of Housing and the Housing Bank with real estate development companies and banks to introduce the government land rights development prog program projects. The Deputy Prime Minister affirmed that the government, headed by the His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, pays considerable attention to activate the private sector's role as a major partner in providing social housing projects for citizens with limited income which resulted in providing thousands of housing units to citizens during the past few years. He stated that the technical and financial capabilities of real estate development companies qualify them for a greater role during the next stage in terms of increasing the supply of housing projects provided by the ministry to citizens. Sheikh Khalid said that the government supports all initiatives and innovative solutions that contribute to providing immediate services to citizens and praised the company's efforts in many projects in Deirat al Ayoun, Salman Town, Al Lawzi, and Al Mazia program in line with the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 regarding the housing sector. The Supreme Judicial Council revealed the Council's latest statistics regarding appeals heard before the Courts of Cassation to date, which amounted to nearly 600 appeals as the average age of appeals in which the Court of Cassation decides is only about four months. The Vice President of the Supreme Judicial Council and President of the Court of Cassation Councillor, Abdullah bin Hassan al bainain said that the reduction in the average age of the appeals heard before the Court of Cassation came as a result of the strenuous efforts made by judges in their 
work and their sincere abilities and competencies. He also affirmed that the Supreme Judicial Council is moving forward in developing litig litigation mechanisms, achieving prompt justice, safeguarding rights and freedoms by shortening the litigation period and exp expediting the settlement of cases and raising the efficiency of procedures and the quality of judgments through the development of specialized judges' tracks, the judicial performance appraisal system, and the re-engineering and simplification of judicial procedures. The President of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, affirmed that the health insurance law stems from the Kingdom's Economic Vision 2030, which promotes the principle of competitiveness and sustainability. In 2030, which actually emphasized that you know Bahrain should have a good, uh, good, good, good level of uh, healthcare, and uh, it should become uh, competitive, uh, transparent, and uh, and sustainable. That's I think the most important thing that came to India. The other thing actually it came to Bahrain Vision in 20, uh, 2016. To, and uh, to, uh, until 2.25. And uh, actually that's had emphasized, you know, a lot of other things. One of them that uh, to begin working on the health insurance. And uh, actually the health insurance law actually had issued in 19, uh, 19, uh, 2018. And actually it you know, emphasized the same thing, that, you know, the Bahraini should have, you know, good uh, high level uh, uh, care and he should have the ability to choose the services from uh, the hospitals or the primary care according to his preference. The law aims to provide an integrated, high-quality, flexible and sustainable health system that attracts investment and ensures freedom for all to choose the health service provider and provide fair and competitive, competitive health services within a framework that protects the rights of all parties. Well, of course, you know, uh, the program Sahati comprises of uh, many pillars. People call them pillars or you would like to call them projects so to simplify the matter, but those projects are like the infrastructure required to ensure that the program works well together. So we have, first of all, SHIFA, which stands for the Social Health uh, National Fund Authority, and uh, mainly that is, uh, to simplify it, it's like an insurance, uh, health insurance company, which, which uh, really cater for Bahrainis, collecting all the premiums from the government, putting it in this fund, and then hospitals can claim whatever services that they do through a claim management system through to Shifa. And uh, then we have what we call HICMA, which is the Health Information and Knowledge Management Agency. That is mainly the core of the whole uh, system, mainly based on IT and decision-making tools like uh, health economy and, and uh, training requirements, uh, planning, and so on. And then we come to uh, what we call the uh, uh, autonomy of hospitals and primary care. That is indeed a very, very important pillar where we give uh, an autonomy uh, structure to both the uh, uh, providers and the government uh, uh, sector as such, and that is uh, primary health care and hospitals. Both will be an, having an autonomous status where they can manage and take decision within the organization and themselves, so making it easier and quicker to, to uh, take decisions that will reflect on patient as such. And then we go further and we have what we call uh, restructuring of Minister of Health. We, this project is uh, hand in hand. We work uh, very closely with Minister of Health as well. And uh, they are part and parcel of this program. So restructuring it because no more they will be provider of, of, of care. They will be mainly playing a role of uh, planner and regulators of the system as such with the help of NARA, of course. And then we, 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 we move on to what we call the BCHIP program, which is the uh, private health insurance uh, cooperative uh, private uh, uh, insurance program, which is addresses the requirement for the expatriates community, which is uh, our partner in building this uh, nation. So we ensure that they as well will have a good system for enabling healthcare provision to, to them as well. So these are the main pillars as such. 
The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, and the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Engineer Wa'al al-Mubarak, inaugurated the first phase of the sustainable energy projects in schools during a field visit to al Mithaq Intermediate Boys School. The ministers listened to a briefing by the company implementing the project on its stages and a number of other projects within the first phase of renewable energy projects in schools. The Minister of Education thanked the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs on the cooperation between the two ministries in implementing the project that aims to protect the environment and utilize natural energy resources. He affirmed the ministry's keenness on sustainable energy projects and noted that the new school buildings will be made of environmentally friendly materials. For his part, the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs hailed the Education Ministry's initiative to utilize sustainable energy for producing electricity in public schools and the cooperation between the Education and Electricity and Water Affairs Ministries as well as the company implementing the project. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Al Zayani, participated in the Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue Conference 2022, which commenced today in Berlin at the invitation of the Federal Minister for Foreign Affairs, Annalena Bayer Bock, and the Federal Minister for Economic Affairs and Climate Action, Robert Habeck, a number of foreign economy, energy, and environment ministers from around the world and international organizations concerned with environmental, climate, and energy will participate in the conference, which is held with the motto From Ambition to Action. The two day conference is scheduled to discuss energy issues and their impact on climate and the environment, renewable energy, and the existing global efforts to deal with the repercussions of climate change. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the Azerbaijani Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ji Hun Bayamov, on the sidelines of the Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue Conference. The meeting discussed the friendly relations between the two countries and the means to develop and expand joint cooperation in various fields to serve the common interests of the two friendly countries and people, in addition to regional and international developments and issues of common interest. The Minister of Health, Faiq Al Saleh, chaired the first meeting of the National Anti-Smoking Committee for the year 2022. The committee stressed the importance of intensifying awareness campaigns through holding seminars and events and preparing a joint media plan in cooperation with relevant authorities in order to contribute to achieve the desired goals in the fields of combating smoking, tobacco and its products. The panel also reviewed proposals and observations aimed at achieving the endeavors of the committee in the field of combating smoking in cooperation with the relevant authorities authorities and strengthening community partnership. The Supreme Council for Women launched the guide to media coverage of family affairs during an event organized virtually with the participation of the Secretary General of the Council, Halil Ansari, the Minister of Information, Ali al rumehi and President of the Bahrain Journalist Association, Isa al Shaji, in addition to approximately 90 media professionals, journalists, opinion writers, and guests. The event began with a welcoming speech delivered by Al Ansari, in which she explained that the issuance of this guide comes within the framework of what her royal. Highness, the wife of the king and the president of the council, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, stresses on many occasions on the supporting role of the media to communicate what is achieved for women. Al Ansari added that the idea of this guide stems from the two main pillars, which are the council's conviction of the pivotal role of media sector institutions as an influential role in shaping convictions, consolidating values, and raising awareness of the necessities of family stability as an essential component for protecting the social fabric as a main element. Al Ansari indicated that there is a need to put forward the idea of the guide and to consult about it with institutions, platforms, and media bodies to consider it in terms of its orientations and content to find out the needs of today, especially the needs regarding family affairs, as the draft guide aims to provide detail, uh, detailed explanations for everything that is needed by specialists in the family field. 
The Undersecretary for Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs at the Ministry of Interior, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, announced the launch of the digital residency and passport issuance services for the first time through the national e-government portal. We are joined over the phone by the Acting Director of Visas and Residence, Major Salman bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, who will elaborate further on the matter. Hello, Major Salman. Can you tell us more about the launching of digital residence permit service? Hello, good evening. Uh, yes, uh, the digital residence permit has been launched replacing the RP sticker. As no residence permit sticker must be printed and placed in the residence passport. Uh, this residency will be available through Bahrain.bh and you'll be able to print or save the residence permit in your smartphone. Uh, the main characteristics of this residency is that it's available 24 hours online. Uh, it will be available uh, by entering the passport number and CPR number. Uh, the, the new features that will be available in the residence permit will be the personal photo and the QR barcode. Uh, this will save the, uh, the time and effort rather than going to the service center or sending someone to get the office sticker. Can you tell us more about the first time passport issuance? What's new about it, how to apply and what document needs to be attached? Yes, the first time uh, Bahrain passport issuance service will be available online through Bahrain.ph. It will be 24 hours. Uh, uh, the father of the newborn will be will log in using the ET, uh, enabled to process the service. He needs to attach his passport, his wife's passport, and his newborn uh, photo uh, alongside with the uh, birth certificate. Uh, this service will be available uh, for the new uh, Bahraini born in Bahrain. And the father must be in Bahrain uh, the time he's applying for this service. And this, uh, this service is simple and easy uh, to process. Um, uh, once the passport is ready, he receives a message uh, for collection. That was Acting Director of Visas and Residence Major Salman bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.